chapter, sorry, fifth section, we are talking about chapter two, today and next week. some discussion previous week. For example, we said, uh, I think this is the third or fourth time I'm repeating this. We, we discussed about a different organization who are uh, trying to practice the safety and OSHA on the building. We also reviewed some uh, method that used in the construction industry to, to avoid any accident. Today we are going to deeper to discuss about actually uh, what we have to do because it's not enough. We only know okay there should shouldn't be any accident on the site. Okay, that's good to know, but but it's not enough to prevent the accident. To prevent the accident, to avoid accident, we must know more information, more details. And also, most importantly, we need to know how to apply the remedy, the solution. Therefore, we are going to discuss about the risk assessment and management today class. And let's see what we have. There are some objectives for, for uh, chapter two which means this week and next week, related to uh, hazard and risk definition, how we have to assess the risk, what is the method to avoid or identify the hazard and the other things you can read here. So, the first topic, what is the risk and risk assessment? It's very important we are able, if we are able, to, to identify the risk. One thing is, uh, I repeat all the time, the current risk in project A always might be different from project B in order if we have two different construction. So for each project, we must see what is the characterization of that project, what kind of uh, detail that a specific project has. So we can be aware of the need of the uh, efficient strategy that needs to be applied. First, what is the hazard? I know, I know by right you, you might know the meaning of the uh, hazard, but in the academic way, what is that? A source, please read it carefully, or a situation with a potential for harm. Be careful when you read this part because it's not meaning you been or your worker or your project has been harmed previously. No. But it mentioned it's vulnerable to harm, some sort of harm. Depends to which worker is working because everybody might or every group might do the different thing. Some, some worker may be working in the uh, electrical section, another might work in the plumber, another might work on the uh, constructing a wall or, or different, so many other responsibilities. So the situation, depending on what kind of work currently running, situation that vulnerable to harm, that harm could be injury for the human, or if we especially 
specifically say to worker. The meaning of human is not a pedestrian who, who walking two blocks away from the construction site. It should be somebody who are exposing. So the situation that's vulnerable or potential to harm to any injury or ill health or damage. This damage could be to property. It's not necessary only be to human, okay? For example, if if construction goes wrong and some uh, component of building collapse without damaging anybody, even, even without damaging any worker, it's still hazard and it uh, affects on the cost of project. So what I want you to do, not limit the accident to injury or damage to the worker, but also to the property, which, which literally means the cost of project or damage to the environment. Sometimes damage to both means property and environment. What kind of damage to environment could have? Let's think. You, you imagine yourself, you are responsible for the project, okay? You are in the middle project or in the beginning or in near to the end. What kind of damage your project could have to the environment. Anything that cross, could you think about it? What kind of damage to environment your project might face or occur during the construction? You can turn on your microphone and share with class in case if you have any idea. You can say this is not true. Your construction never can affect the environment. It's your opinion. We can have discussion. But if you believe, yes, there is some hazard may affect during the construction that affect the environment, please give some example or at least one example. Ah uh, yes, doctor. It can damage the uh, environment, like can happen the pollution. Okay. Yes. What kind of pollution? For example, if you have anything in your mind, you can share. Air pollution, sound, sound pollution. Sound pollution. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Very good example from your friend that shared with us. That's what I need. Very good. Just like some very simple sound pollution during the construction. Or another example, for example, the process currently running for painting the wall. The painting material is chemical, right? So if your worker, if somebody release that paint in the sewerage and make the pollution to the water, that also lead to hazard. Maybe not a straight lead to you, that the one or the person who do the painting, but it can affect our environment because any water going to some uh, some, some, for example, river or some uh, end up to the sea that can make lose the air uh, and water. No, sorry, air, not water. So you can see some, some, some acting maybe is not very visible to us at this moment, but but doing those mistakes can affect the environment. It's not necessary.
unnecessary. The damage happened to workers and or building only. Then you call it hazard. Even to the environment, you can call it hazard. So, danger relative exposure to the hazard, the possibility of suffering injury. The possibility. Be careful. It didn't mention it's already happened because if already happened, then it would have a different story. We are evaluating the position, the situation that we can avoid the accident. We are in that state. If something happened, then, then that's a different discussion. We are not there yet. So danger means something haven't happened yet. There is a possibility. Why we, we want to know that? We want to know this information. This is just part of the bigger puzzle. If you think by reading this page, you will, be, you will learn everything about the safety, you have to think twice. No. This slide, the next slide, there are the small puzzles of the bigger picture that you need to learn all of them, and then only you can use it. So, that was the hazard. But here, let's see, review what is the risk. A combination of the likelihood of accurate of hazards, event with a specified period or in a specified circumstance, and the severity of injury or damage to help of worker, property, environment, or any combination of aforementioned human, property, and the environment. A situation involving exposure to the danger. Well, you can see the picture here. There is something wrong in this picture, or there are some cases wrong here. You can uh, maybe think first. The problem here, actually, there are so many problems. First of all, the worker have not used any uh, equipment related to the safety. You can see here. Secondly, the site, construction site, is not playground for the children. Some chemical or foil should not be close to where the construction activity running. So there are more if you want, if you be focused, you can find. So that's a risk, that was the hazard we discussed or danger. But we wanted to understand because we need to assess the risk. If there is no assessment, we cannot avoid the danger. So what is the risk assessment? The process of evaluating analyzing the risk to the safety arising from hazard at work. Means there is a process that need to evaluate, need analyzing, need assessment of the current situation. If there is no evaluating, then we don't know what's going on. You remember last week we discussed so many issues about the safety, such as you might ha you you must you must have a good or uh, create a good bridge between you and worker, so they inform you if something are going to wrong. That's also part of the risk evaluation. Risk assessment is document means. Uh, 
you have some completed document, you might write down everything there. That can be, uh, for example, piece of paper, or you make a Excel file. That's no different, as long as you have document, okay? Maybe last time they only write on the paper, but nowadays everybody have phone, tablet, laptop, computer, so they can transfer this information in the file, soft copy. There's no difference. So those documents used for risk control in OSH management and also will be used for future reference, future review. Also can be used on next job. If there is similarity between current job and future project. So for better understanding, I want to invite you all, let's watch a tutorial, a very short video about the uh, same topic, which is the safety assessment. And if you have any question, please don't be shy. You always can turn on your microphone, raise your hand, and uh, ask your question. We can discuss about it during the class. Okay, let's watch. workers and other people from harm. Look for things that could cause injury or illness and decide if you're taking reasonable steps to prevent them. This is called assessing risk and it's straightforward for most small businesses. It's just one part of how you can manage risk to keep people safe and healthy at work. Look around your workplace for things that could cause harm. These are called hazards. Ask yourself, how are people using equipment? Are they working in disorganized or unsafe ways? Is your workplace in a suitable condition? For example, are walkways always clear? Your accident book and sickness records might help identify less obvious hazards. Think about hazards to health like repeated or heavy lifting, using chemicals and causes of work-related stress. Pay attention to potentially vulnerable people like pregnant workers, young people, or those with disabilities. Remember other people who might be harmed, like contractors or visitors. Speak to your workers, as they may see potential hazards and have good ideas to help reduce the risks. Once you know the hazards in your workplace, decide who might be harmed and how, and what you're doing to protect them. It's then much easier to decide what further actions to take and who should carry them out. Sometimes you might not be able to remove the hazard completely. So think about how you can make it less likely to cause harm. For example, you could do the job another way, use different materials or tools, or provide personal protective equipment. If you employ five or more people, you must record the hazards, who might be harmed, and what you're doing to control the risks. You can use our risk assessment template and examples to help you. Review what you're doing to control risk whenever there are significant changes, like new staff or equipment. You should also review your controls if your workers spot a problem or after any accidents or near misses. Update your records with any changes you make. Protecting people is about what you do to control risks, not the forms you fill in.
share with you in very simple language. You don't want to pay someone or fine. So, it's best for you, for everybody to follow the risk assessment or carry out the risk assessment. There are so many reasons. If you just flash back, last week we said have some direct and indirect costs. So, you can see there are so many things that give incentive to you follow to, to carry out the risk assessment. So the effect of accident, let me go back here. If you change the title, if you not carry out the assessment, risk assessment, then have so many consequences. It's going to have a bad image for your company. You might lose your future customer. And so many things you might face with compensation, repairing, and direct, direct costs. Therefore, you can see, we, I just try to share with you why carrying out the risk is very important. Because maybe some of you right now thinking it's very easy. I just go to work morning and come back afternoon. And all I have to do, maybe, maybe you think like that. I have to observe the worker so they're busy with their job. 
but you can see it's not that simple. You must expand your knowledge. You must take a responsibility. It's not only this job, any other job, even if somebody work in another era, like, like uh, if somebody seller some material or somebody make a cake, The danger might seem less there, right? Okay, maybe, but but even despite that job different, but that person, they need to be aware during the work. They cannot go to sleep, leave their business just just without protection, without caring, without uh, controlling the risk. For example, if somebody who uh, make the cake and sell it to customer. If she or he goes to sleep and the oven burn the cake, you see what happened? No profit. I just said, yes, the level of risk, they're different from your work, but the point is you need to be aware, be conscious in the, on the workplace. So risk assessment should be carried out for a different kind of job, routine and non-routine activity, including the emergency task or work. Activities for the, of all personnel having access to the workplace, which means workplace here, site. We previously discussed about, last few weeks discussed about the site lion. Keep in your mind. Facility at the workplace, whether provided by organization or others. So when we have to carry out the risk assessment? I think the answer, you can easily answer this question. If you just flash back, what we discussed previously. When I mentioned to you the assessments need to be handled, carry out during the planning and budgeting activity. So planning, when happened? Before the activity, physical activity event started on the site, even before we process the tender or bidding, right? So that is the before operation. During the construction stage, when all the worker machinery started digging, making the foundation, and every day by day they, they working do something maybe else. They not do same thing every day, of course. So during this operation, the risk assessment need to be carried out. And after protection operation, yeah, this this will protect the resident who is going to live in that building in the future. You need to evaluate if everything run and uh, construct as planned or not. So, when when you review or whoever review their risk assessment, there there must be a word. There are two different types of the review, which is the initial review and second one is a periodic review. There are slightly different between these two types of review. We will discuss about it later. So, there are another question. I, I, if you notice, every title in each different slide is bringing a new question for us, which is trying to give us more information. When to review the risk, 
Okay, when to review risk? Hang on. We just mentioned previous phase. When to carry out the review risk? There is a difference between carrying out or doing the risk assessment and reviewing the risk assessment. Do not confuse these two different words carried out describing something else reviewing the risk assessment is different thing so let's see when we have to do that whenever or any time some changes need to be applied in our project we need to do the review for our risk assessment plan. So these changes could be internal, which means some change from inside the company. Maybe uh, the company reached to the uh, conclusion that we need to modify the building plan. Okay. So you have to review your risk, update your risk. Because new changes may require new equipment, new knowledge, new technique. So do you see the difference between carry out and review? That carry out, you already knew what is going on, what we want to construct. So you just carry out. But when you want to change something, that change might be not ordinary as what you already had planned. So you need to review to, to see, do I need to take extra caution? Or no, the current plan is running well. So this is for internal and sometimes the change might be external. For example, uh, the, we faced some changes in the national regulation. Well, if I want to give you an example, maybe I can tell you something like that. Previously, the, the, the regulation was permit to you to construct a building up to 30 story building. Now it changed, they let you construct up to 35 stories, five extra stories. So that is the time you need to review the risk because the previous plan, risk assessment only covered up to some session level. Now you're going to construct 35, five extra stories. So maybe in case, you need some extra precaution or risk regulation, that is time for you to read. So I hope you understand what is the difference between carrying out and the risk. The next question. Okay, okay, you might say I understand. I, I need to know to carry out the risk assessment. But who are you? Who are you to be responsible for controlling the risk assessment? Is this, is this you are, uh, uh, for example, the truck driver need to carry out the risk assessment? Lorry driver need to carry out the risk assessment for our project? Or no? Owner should do that. Or maybe uh, sub contractor should carry out the risk assessment for the whole project or project manager. Let's see. A person who trained to identify the risk is responsible for carrying out the risk assessment. Okay, interesting. Not everybody, but the person should have one important criteria or characterization. He must, he or she must 
string previously. Oh, okay, that's good. So that person is knowledgeable person. So in some cases, you can see the competent person might be called a chemical health risk assessor. Consultation with involvement of the work care involvement who he will carry out the risk assessment. So now we know who want to handle the risk assessment. We know uh, what we should carry out, we should review. So now question is, what are the basic components or details of risk assessment? There are some details here we have. We need to find what are, what activity can create the hazard. What kind of activity or process can create the hazard? Risk assessment, risk control, and then review. The process of risk management as following. You can follow this flow chart that you can see. Pardon, okay, uh, that you can see in your screen. It is different than identification that would make uh, facilitate our process, determine the risk, decide if this risk, when you determine that next step, is this risk is tolerable? Tolerable here, give us this message. Is this risk are going to to have lead to accident immediately or no there is a gap for this risk until reach to that stage to make a imminent in danger or accident so if yes if yes if it's tolerable okay you make a plan if not tolerable you make an immediate plan and review and check if the plan you this plan is solution here yeah, means if I want to translate is solution is is a strategy that avoid of the risk happen the accident happen if that is adequate if it's uh, appropriate if it's a proper solution okay you done. Now go back again from start and come back. If not, you must here come with a better solution before you go back and redo everything again. So literally, what is the risk? The risk is severity means how bad is that times two likelihood means the percentage that accident can happen. That shows the risk is high, is tolerable or not ter tolerable. If uh, we get the higher amount, here means it is getting close to not be tolerable. Any questions so far, please share. So, next discussion is about hazard identification. So, let's see. Because here the risk assessment, in the, inside the risk assessment, 
we are facing with hazard identification, right? This hazard identification is part of the risk assessment. Now we want to see, okay, what is that hazard identification? Before we continue, let's uh, watch a very short tutorial together. get more information about the topic. Listen carefully and if you have any question we can discuss later after the uh, tutorial. Okay, let's see. Let's watch carefully. If you have any question you can take a note we discuss later. joining me today. I appreciate you helping with the, the quarterly walkthrough. You guys have been trained, right? You have? Yes. Last September we attended. September? Yeah, yeah. I believe around the 12th. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Regular safety inspections at your workplace are critical to preventing in injuries and illnesses. The main purpose of these inspections is to identify hazards by examining conditions or practices in the workplace so needed changes can be made. In this video, we'll follow safety committee members as they conduct an inspection. Good. good. So you know what we will be doing? Um, we want to, uh, we've had really good inspections recently. Uh, so, you know, I know. When your safety committee members conduct their inspection, it's important they, one, listen to the concerns of workers and supervisors. Gather input from the people who are directly involved in the work you're inspecting. Two, learn more about jobs and tasks. Even if you already know a lot about the tasks at your work, it's good to examine the steps being taken by others to complete the job. You may be surprised at what you'll find. 3. Identify existing and potential hazards. Don't stop at the ones that you see. Go deeper and find hazards that haven't yet come to the surface. 4. Determine the underlying causes of those hazards. Find out what's causing them. 5. Monitor hazard controls that are already in place. This includes personal protective equipment, engineering controls, policies, and procedures. And finally, recommend corrective action. Your effort does nothing to stop injuries if the hazards aren't fixed. Make recommendations and follow through to ensure they are corrected. To demonstrate these concepts, let's watch safety committee members as they conduct an inspection. Okay. All right. Well, good. I think uh, we are ready to begin. All right. is to begin by walking through aisles, looking for out-of-place items and trip hazards. Make sure exits aren't blocked and clear signage is in place. In this case, the exit sign isn't turning on when tested. The members of the group will then document this as part of their inspection. Investigating electrical hazards are always a priority in a safety inspection like this, and this includes ensuring that outlets are working properly. It looks like this one has reversed polarity, which creates a possible shock hazard. It's something that can't be repaired immediately, so the documentation will note that it must be followed up on. Another important point is to inspect fire extinguishers. Confirm the extinguisher is visible, unobstructed, and in its assigned location. It's on the floor, so it must be placed in the correct location. This is an example of a hazard that can be fixed immediately. Verify the locking pin is intact and the tamper seal is unbroken. Confirm the pressure gauge or indicator is in the operable range or position and lift the extinguisher to ensure it's still full. Examine the extinguisher for obvious physical damage, corrosion, leakage, or a clogged nozzle. Make sure the operating instructions on the nameplate are readable and facing outward. Check the last professional service date on the tag to make sure the manufacturer recommendations are being followed for routine inspections. Okay. 
Since this company has forklifts in their operation, it's necessary to check with drivers and ensure that operating procedures are being followed correctly. One of the things our team will be reviewing is the operator checklist. A few things to check are brakes, steering, seatbelts, lights, and engine maintenance. A vehicle walk around should be done, which is a visual examination of tires and wheels, hydraulics, data plate, and general overall condition of the vehicle. There's a lot to cover when it comes to forklifts, so we're not going to go into all those details in this video, but the Oregon OSHA website topic page for powered industrial trucks has additional information. There's a link in the description below. If the machinery is part of your workplace, it should be included in your safety inspection. You want to make sure that all the proper machine guarding is in place and that it's in good condition. You'll want to talk with the operator to find out if lockout procedures are being followed when the guards are temporarily removed to conduct maintenance. Make sure proper signage is being used to communicate hazards to employees. In this case, it's about communicating electrical hazards. You may want to consult the manufacturer's manual to make sure the machine is being used correctly and maintained by the employees. Another important aspect is verifying that employees working with the machine are properly tra trained in its usage and wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment. Next to this machine, there's a shadow board, so it's a good practice to make sure the tools are in good condition and in the correct place. The inventory list will have an up-to-date listing of the tools on the board to make sure nothing is missing or incorrectly placed. Certain industries are required by Oregon OSHA to have eyewash station equipment. Here, our team is inspecting one of their eyewash stations. This is a plumbed eyewash station, so they're checking to ensure it's properly capped, the water flow is clear, and it's running hands-free. If you have a portable eyewash station, you'll want to check a few different things, like verifying the fluid is changed on schedule. some notes and then you can fill in anything that I might have missed. Um, so that After you've finished your inspection, discuss the problems, hazards, or accidents that could generate from the team's findings. Prioritize which ones are most important to repair first and develop a clear plan of action. In this example, we have several topics the group needs to address. Okay. That emergency light and exit sign at the, at the door was not working and I'll write a word so we'll get, uh, get someone to fix that. It's probably a battery. When writing your inspection report, state exactly what was found and accurately identify its location. The more detailed you are, the more effective it will be. It can be beneficial to assign a priority level to the hazards to indicate the urgency of the corrective action that's required. An example of this would be using a system like this. So A is major, B serious, and C would be minor. When you assign priorities to hazards, it helps management to identify them and evaluate them to reach decisions faster. After listing each hazard, specify how to fix them and create deadlines if possible. Each inspection member should review the report for accuracy, clarity, and thoroughness. As well as addressing the current hazards, remember to review and monitor the progress of previous recommendations. Good. We got that put back in place, so I'll, uh, we'll just do a memo to management about, you know, keep an eye on that, make sure they're fire extinguishers. Workplace safety is a continual improvement process that requires commitment to the well-being of employees. Oregon OSHA has many resources to help, including a sample safety inspection report. There's a link in the description to our hazard identification topic page where you can access these resources. If you want guidance in developing a safer work environment, please consider our free and confidential consultation service. There's a link to our consultation page below. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about safety and health. Okay, I hope this tutorial was efficient for you and you learned something uh, out of it. Any questions?
the question. Everything was clear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Let's proceed. Clear. So now we are discussing about the hazard. Before we go through it, one thing is important that we are aware what is the source of the hazard because this would help you, would help anybody that manage and analyze the hazard in more easiest way. First of all, man unsafe act, man or woman, whoever working in the construction. So here mentioned, uh, the, the, you see the source we have here, uh, mentioned man maybe because most of the workers on the site are men, not ladies. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What is matter, we know that is talking about unsafe act, means they, worker, do something that is considered as dangerous or hazard. For example, they, they uh, not use the proper protection equipment, such as boots, such as uh, gloves, or any other thing. Machinery could be another source for accident, for danger, for hazard. Material itself, the method of the construction or method of doing every single task, and the media talking actually about the work condition, air quality, uh, ventilation in the workplace, lighting, noise, vibration. And, and, and many other things. Therefore, the hazard have some category, some uh, uh, classification, as you can see in the topic. The first one is a mechanical classification of the hazard. So you can see just, I want to share with you this is the source of the hazard, but this very, very uh, holistic view. Now from here, we are going to make it in more detail. The first is mechanical, such as the sharp point, the edge overload, uh, force a tool beyond its capability, which can case uh, broken of that tool to make fire, Electrical classification of hazard can be anything that related to damage came from electrical, biological, exposure to airborne, bloodborne, bacteria, fungi, or anything such as like that chemical classification of hazard. I think this one is very clear. It's related to chemical, which is unhealthy, related to carcinogens. Carcinogen is any content, is any uh, material that's related to human breathing. When you breathe some chemical, that is related, that is what we call carcinogen. Ergonomic, ergonomic is related to uh, do some activity, physical activity on site, but you do it in the wrong way that can injure your body Psychological is such as stress, violence at work. But let's see, let's, I want to give you an example of the ergonomic because 
this ergonomic is one of the uh, very famous kind of hazard in the industry, not only between industry, in any industry. Take a look carefully in the picture. There you see a man that want to live and, and uh, carry a piece of the world such as brick. The right one is doing this job wrongly because it can damage the spine and the back of this worker. But the correct way is the one that we show on the left picture. So this injury, this kind of hazard, may definitely not lead to injury that causes the blooding, but definitely it causes the illness. What is that? What I'm trying to share with you, maybe I previously mentioned in previous weeks, the hazard assessment is not only limited to when we see somebody got injury and bleeding in their hand, in their leg. No. Even this kind of injury is part of risk assessment that it should not happen. Pre-assessment, information, so information on the facilities, processes, and activities of organization, including to have a map of the area, site plan, process flowchart, inventory of materials, means you have a list of all the materials that are available on the store, and also the material that supposed to be toxic and monitoring the data is considered as pre-assessment information gathering pre-assessment classify work activity is uh, consists of geographical area and the premises stage in production process Find the task and identify the working group. So now here we want to know what are the methods of identifying the hazard. Does have any method? Let's review this. Does have any method? We can find find what is the hazard. Yes, of course it has. There are some methods can find and identify the hazard. First of all, review of document and the publication. Second, inspection at the workplace and observation. What does it mean of observation? Observation means simply if you see something like this situation, you have Stop it. Measurement. Okay. Yeah. And hazard analysis. Document review. What is the document review? Means report of accidents. Information from publication. Act regulation, statistics, handbook, and chemical safety data sheet. So here we have uh, different types for inspection. As you can see here, we have statutory and the periodic inspection, formal, informal inspection. Let's see. Statutory and external schedule continuous executive and okay Ex 
both share monitoring. Type of monitoring, area and personal monitoring. So this monitoring are included any noise, heat, radiation, air contaminates, and chemicals. Analysis. There are different methods for analyzing the hazard. For example, one of the methods for analyzing hazard we call job safety analysis (JSA). Another method, hazard and operability study. Another method we call it uh, fault tree. Analysis. There are also another type of method. Normally, in this method for analyzing the hazard, the job distributed in five to fifteen uh, distinctive steps. And normally, in this method. They need to make a comprehensive list consist of everything that or could go wrong. Okay, for better understanding, let's watch a tutorial. Okay, listen carefully. In, and if you have any question during the class, you can take a note. We discuss after finishing the tutorial. A dangerous shot. A deadly fall. Both happened because a complete job safety analysis, or JSA, was either not done, done incorrectly, or not followed. We are discussing about JSA, okay? In fact, almost every accident on your rig today happens because of a lack of pre-job planning. And the best pre-job planning safety tool you have is a JSA. Taking shortcuts and not planning a job properly can cause serious injuries and accidents that can be deadly. A proper JSA, along with a complete permit to work when required, creates a safer, more efficient work environment and effectively identifies all hazards. A JSA will also greatly reduce your chances of being hurt on the job. Just think of a JSA as your first line of defense in getting you and your rig crew through your tower safely. Took some shortcuts and um, assumed that the pump was locked out. A team member whose leg was broken in two places found out the hard way why it's so crucial for each crew to perform their own proper JSA. Ah! and get a permit to work for jobs that require an added safety barrier. You know, as soon as that accident happened, what's, what's the very first thing that went through your mind, bro? Pain. Pain. Uh, it broke my leg in half uh, in two places. Uh, it was excruciating pain, and, uh, and uh, basically, if I wouldn't have taken that shortcut, I wouldn't be in that situation I was in. We should have um, all gone up and reviewed uh, the JSA, got to the proper steps and procedures, 
and um, made sure that um, everything was locked and packed out before we jumped on it. You know, the pump started working on it. I will do it the right way next time. I will not take any shortcuts. Take your chain off of that little chain hoist and go through the inside of the liner. A properly completed JSA will identify obvious hazards or dangerous conditions you're about to encounter, and some that are not so obvious, like stored hydraulic or electrical energy. A good JSA is critical because it gets every job off to a safe start by giving you step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform your job and do it safely. Is there any other valves you have to close that? But even the best JSA won't help the rig team member who didn't participate and writing or reviewing it. And how did we release that energy? I don't think it's going to change the change. Okay, and then? So be certain to include everyone involved in the job in the JSA review. They see a safer, easier way to get the job done. Now that you've learned why a JSA is so important to your safety, here's the steps you'll need to follow to complete a proper JSA. First, Identify and write down a clear, concise list of steps that you'll need to complete your work safely. Once you have that list, identify any potential job hazards. And take the time to look around and talk about how you... you and your team members can avoid injury if things don't go as planned. And remember to plainly spell out by being very specific any pinch points, slip hazards, or trip hazards to everyone. Is there something you have to do first before you break the metal aligner? Make certain less experienced hands ask questions and that they clearly understand and the dangers they'll be facing. Supervisors should verify this by asking open-ended questions. What are you going to do to uh, de-energize it, first of all? I'm going to open up the two-inch line. Okay, uh, that's all for today's class. If you have any questions, please feel free to share. If not, please wait for making your attendance. Please use your phone. Scan your attendance. Do not message me after class. Or I was attend because I have no idea or proof that you attend or not. Better you scan it now.